I always thought of my school as ordinary. A place where the most exciting events were the occasional fire drills or the rare school-wide assemblies. But that perception started to unravel in subtle, unsettling ways. It began with small, almost inconsequential things. I remember walking down the hallway, the chatter of my classmates a familiar backdrop. When I noticed a poster about the upcoming science fair, I paused, trying to recall if it had been there a moment before, but shrugged it off and continued to my locker. When I returned the same way after class, the poster was gone. I stopped, my heart skipping a beat, but then laughed at myself. It's just a poster, I thought. But these incidents started to accumulate. During lunch one day, I watched a bird perched on the windowsill outside. I blinked, and it was suddenly on the other side of the glass, still as a photograph. No one else seemed to notice. I just shook my head, blaming it on lack of sleep or maybe too much caffeine. Then there were the repetitions. I'd see a group of students turn the corner, only for the same group to appear moments later, repeating their actions and conversations with eerie precision. I started doubting my sanity, wondering if I was trapped in some deja vu. There were also the weather changes. One instance in particular I remember vividly. I was sitting in history class, staring out the window. It was a clear, sunny day, but within the blink of an eye, the sky darkened and rain pattered against the windows. No gradual shift, just an instant leap from day to night. I glanced around, expecting reactions, but everyone continued as if nothing had happened. I couldn't ignore these anomalies any longer. They gnawed at me. I started documenting them, scribbling in a small notebook I kept hidden. Patterns eluded me, but the frequency of these occurrences intensified, and with it, a growing sense of dread settled in my stomach. The most unsettling event happened just as I was about to dismiss my observations as products of an overactive imagination. I was walking to the library, my mind preoccupied, when I reached for the door handle. As my fingers closed around the metal, a jolt ran through me. The door, the hallway, the very air around me shimmered like a disturbed pond. For a split second, I saw something else. A sterile, colorless corridor lined with unmarked doors. I blinked, and it was gone replaced again by the familiar sight of my school's library entrance. That moment cemented it. There was something profoundly wrong with my school, something that defied logic and reason. I stood there, heart pounding, a cold sweat breaking out on my forehead. The comforting normality of my world had cracked, revealing a sliver of something unknown, something terrifying. And I knew, with a sinking feeling, that I couldn't rest until I uncovered the truth behind these unsettling glitches in my seemingly ordinary school life. I needed a plan. The oddities weren't just quirks of an overactive imagination. They were clues to something much larger, something hidden beneath the veneer of my mundane school life. Patterns began to emerge in the chaos. The glitches occurred more frequently around certain areas of the school. The old science lab, the rarely used back staircase, and oddly, near the cafeteria's vending machine. It was as if these locations were focal points for whatever was causing the anomalies. While tracking the frequency of these occurrences, I stumbled upon a startling discovery. Hidden behind a row of old lockers lay a door. It was odd, not just in its placement, but in its very appearance, sleek and metallic, starkly contrasting with the school's aged brick walls. I had passed by this spot countless times yet I had never noticed it before. Compelled by a mix of fear and curiosity, I reached for the handle. The door opened to a room bathed in blue light, filled with screens and unfamiliar technology. I stepped inside, the door closing silently behind me. The room was a nerve center, with monitors displaying different parts of the school, some showing places I recognized, others entirely foreign. It was in this room that the truth hit me like a tidal wave. The school was a facade, a simulation masking something far more complex. The glitches were faults in this simulation, brief windows into the reality beneath. I wasn't just a student. I was a participant in an experiment, the nature of which I couldn't begin to comprehend. 
but I needed to understand the purpose of this simulation and, more importantly, who was behind it. I studied the room, taking notes of everything I saw on the screens, the patterns of the glitches, and the layout of the unknown areas. I was no longer just a passive observer in this bizarre scenario. I was now an active seeker of its secrets. The door had opened, both literally and figuratively, and I was compelled to walk through it, to confront the truth, no matter how unsettling it might be. My school life had been a carefully constructed illusion, and I was determined to tear it down, to reveal the truth hidden behind the curtain of this elaborate simulation. The more I delved into the secrets of the simulated world, the more I realized the depth of its deception. Each visit to the hidden control room revealed layers of complexity, convincing me that breaking free wouldn't be easy. I couldn't do this alone. I confided in a few friends, showing them the control room and the glitches I had documented. Skepticism turned into shared concern as they witnessed the anomalies firsthand. Together, we started piecing together the fabric of our false reality, trying to find its weaknesses. Our plan was risky and multifaceted. Firstly, we needed to understand the operational mechanics of the simulation, how it was controlled and maintained. We studied the patterns and codes appearing on the screens, slowly learning to manipulate small aspects of the simulation. Secondly, we needed a way out. We discovered that the simulation was most unstable at its peripheries. The edges of the school grounds were blurred and distorted, suggesting a potential exit. But the simulation had safety protocols. Areas heavily monitored and swiftly corrected once anomalies were detected. We had to be stealthy and precise. We also needed a distraction. This involved hacking into the system, a task that was perilous but necessary. Finally, we prepared for the unknown. What was outside the simulation? This question plagued our thoughts. We gathered supplies, anything we thought could be useful, and hid them near the exit points. The night of our escape was tense. Our plan was to initiate a series of calculated glitches across the school, creating a chaotic environment that would stretch the resources of the simulation. As the simulation's focus shifted to correct these anomalies, we would make our move to the edge of the school grounds, where reality was thinnest. I remember the adrenaline pumping through me as we executed our plan. Monitors flickered erratically, the sound of alarms echoed through the hallways, and the air felt charged with electricity. We moved swiftly, avoiding areas where the simulation was strongest. As we reached the edge of the school grounds, the world around us started to warp and twist. The ground beneath our feet felt unstable, as if we were walking on a thin sheet of reality stretched over an abyss of the unknown. With one last look at the world we had known, we stepped through the shimmering veil at the edge of the simulation. A blinding light enveloped us, and for a moment, there was a sensation of floating, of being unmoored from everything familiar. Then, just as suddenly, we landed. The light receded, and we found ourselves in a new reality, one that was starkly different from the simulated world of the school. The air was colder, the sky a different shade, and the surroundings unrecognizable. We had done it. We had broken free from the simulation. But as we stood there, taking in our new environment, we realized our journey was far from over. We were now in a world unknown, a reality that held its own secrets and dangers. A mixture of awe and apprehension washed over us. The world outside was vast, more expansive and real than anything we had ever known. The sky stretched in an endless expanse above us, a deeper blue than the simulated skies could ever replicate. We navigated this new world cautiously, aware that each step took us further into the unknown. The terrain was uneven, a stark contrast to the manicured grounds of our simulated school. Buildings in the distance loomed, not like the familiar architecture of our previous world, but strange and industrial. We were outsiders here escapees from a reality that others might not even fathom. Our journey led us to confront the entity behind the simulation. The entity, as it turned out, was not a single being, but a collective of individuals. Part of a larger organization that monitored and maintained the simulation. The confrontation was less of a battle and more of a revelation. The purpose of the simulation was explained. 
an experiment in human behavior and development, an advanced study that we were unwittingly a part of. Our existence, our entire lives in the simulation, were subjects of research. Anger, betrayal, and a sense of violation surged through us. But alongside these emotions, there was also an undercurrent of understanding. The researchers explained their perspective, their scientific curiosity, and the ethical boundaries they believed they hadn't crossed. In the end, they offered us a choice. We could remain in this real world, adapting to its rules and ways of life, or return to the simulation with the knowledge of its true nature. It was a decision that weighed heavily. The simulation was a lie, but it was a familiar one, a world where we knew the rules and boundaries. We each made our choice, some choosing to stay in the real world, while others, including me, decided to return to the simulation. But the return was not a retreat into ignorance. We carried back with us the knowledge of the simulation's true nature, and with it, the power to shape our reality within its digital confines. Life in the simulation continued, but it was different now. We were aware, awake to the truths that lay beyond the code. We lived with the understanding that our world was not the only one, that beyond the digital sky lay a reality vast and unknown. It was a new beginning, a story of awakening, of choices and the complex interplay between reality and perception. Our journey was a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, our unyielding quest for truth, and the enduring quest to understand our place in the vast tapestry of existence.